Hey, it's Dan, and welcome to Unified Gaming. So in this one, I want to share with you The Last DK, a Dragonite PvP build that does it all. Great sustain, amazing damage, and really high defense. This does use The Last Aided King's Mythic to good extent, and I'll show you how to do that yourself. I'm also going to show you where you can get it and just some tips generally, and if you want to see the build in action, there will be gameplay coming to the channel, so do subscribe, and do consider checking out my streams where I stream every Saturday on YouTube. As always, a like and a comment really helps, and if you want to support myself, I do have a Patreon where you get early access and much more. Details down below. So, what are we doing for this build? Well, as you gather, we are using the Talk of the Last Aided King. This item is really, really weird, but really, really cool at the same time. It gives you a ton of weapon and spell damage, magicka recovery, stam recovery, and 15% damage reduction. What does that actually mean? The recoveries are essentially like Wretched Vitality. So you get Wretched Vitality essentially in a set. The weapon and spell damage is like using Clever Alchemist and New Moon combined. And the 15% reduction is like using a defense set like Mark of the Prior. So this is basically a defensive set, a sustain set, and two damage sets in one item. It's really, really good. You obviously do lose the fact that you can't use things like Balorg and so on, but it's definitely worth getting. In order to get that item, you do need to go to Apocrypha, you do need to go to the Infinite Archive, and you have to farm it. All five leads drop from there. The one thing to note that with that is that when you do um, try to get it, the leads take ages and they only drop from the side room bosses or the final boss at the end, the big um, glass guy. That's kind of where that drops. You can get drops from goblins too. As for the build though, we are using a dark elf. This is weapon and spell damage, flame resist and max resource. The flame resist helps as we are a vampire stage three and the weapon and spell damage works really nicely because we can boost our damage to stupidly high. I'm gonna show you what I mean by stupidly high. On the back bar I'm using frag shield, obsidian shield just to proc a passive but that it will change in a moment. And I just want to show you kind of the tooltips and the stat page. We have 7,500 weapon damage. With continuous attack is over 8,000 weapon damage. It is stupid how high that is. As for the resistances, again it's 20... Right, convert it. And we also have vampirism too. With the attributes, I have 30,000 health and everything split between Magicka and Stamina. Aim for 30k health and then split the rest as you need. For the Mundus, I use the Lover in CP Cyrodiil or IC, but if you do have sustain issues or you're going to no CP battlegrounds, do consider using something like the Atronach or the Serpent. They will give you much more sustain. And as I said earlier, we are a Vampire Stage 3. Vampire Stage 3 is really nice because it gives you access to Undeath, it is a defensive passive, one of the best in the game, and that's like another defensive set anyway. So we are stupidly tanky because of percent reductions. Yes, we take fire damage, but we're a Dark Elf, so we offset that, and we have Undeath. So actually, being a Vampire just makes you tankier, but your skills do cost more. So that's the only caveat. With the sustain, you might notice that we have 1100 stam and 1900 mag. With potions, it's almost 1400 stam recovery and almost 1200 mag recovery. That extra match against stamina here, really, really good. This procs up consistently. In Earthen Heart, you have Battle Roll, which gets ults turned into health, magic, stamina. Really nice. And then you also have help in hand, which gives you more stand back too. So again, all of these things means that although that stand regen looks low, it is very, very high in reality because of how the and some glyphs too if you need more sustain or the Mundus. With the champion points, I've gone with Master at Arms and Deadly Aim. This just increases our direct damage, so things like whip are uh, flames of oblivion, which I'll get to in a moment. And we one with focus mending and ironclad. For the red ones, I use Bastion, increases our shield, which I'll get to in a minute, survival instincts, pain's refuge, and sustained by suffering. These three are like a staple for most builds nowadays. With the skills, I'm gonna just buff up to show you the damage of them, because I think it's important to see. 
And please note that some of them will tweak just because of you can't proc the passives that you need whilst you are um, in PvE. But when we're fully buffed, it's 19k whip, it's 9,300 oblivion, 25k claw, almost 22k noxious breath, 6,200 rock, and our leap will let me put our bus back on, it's fallen off again. So we're just gonna put our buffs back on. Our leap is 22,000 almost. So you can see our damage is a very high, like 25k D gem when it's fully buffed, it's stupidly high the damage on this. So for those skills, it is Molten Whip, Flames of Oblivion, Venomous Claw, Noxious Breath, and Shattering Rock. Shattering Rock is better because it heals you. So when they hit you, you get a big heal, which is really good against um, outnumbered fights. You can just stun a few people and they'll heal you. Leap is a massive shield in PvP, like 18k. So really, really good. For the Bat Bar, we use um, Hardened Armor this time. It gives you a massive shield, as you've seen. 11,000, so 5k in PvP, almost 6. You get major armor buff, and you do a bit of damage if people hit you. We then have Vigor, and I would swap obviously Obsidian Shield for Coag, but because of the target dummy, we can't proc our passives easily. So just obviously factor that in, that's why we're doing that there. Um, and I'll just show you really quick here. So let me just get our damage up. And so we get our three sacks of our claw. And then we're gonna go show you the heal tooltips. So for our heals, we have 26,000 Vigor and almost 15,000 Kawag. It is disgusting, the healing on this. <laughs> Stupidly good. Obviously, for the other skills, we then have Race Against Time, which is a really, really nice skill, and it really helps us just get around, move, etc. And it has Snare Immunity. You can change this if you want for the DK version. So if you can go down to Protective Scale, there is a skill called protective plate you get snare immunity and you get range reduction but you don't get the movement speed so personally i prefer race against time and degen as you saw was a massive damage uh, dot like 25k and it's weapon and spell damage we then use temporal guard on the bat bar for minor protection which gives us more defense even still so you can see with all of that in mind this mythic ends up giving you a really really good set of stats to work with yes our sets turn off but it's a really good mythic I'm going to go and show you kind of how you can utilize the mythic to just get more and more out of it. With the mythic, you have essentially three things that carry over glyphs, traits, and weight stroke type. So the front bar, we use dual wield, and we use dual wield because we can proc access to the twin blade uh, passive, which gives us more penetration. This is really nice. We also get more damage from the offhand. We get um, really, really just good amounts of damage you can change it though if you wish to 2h and you get access to battle rush which gives you more stamina recovery if you kill people that's also a really nice one and all you do is you just change this to a maul you get slightly less damage but and you don't get two glyph procs but it is it's even more sustained or more damage for this we use a disease glyph sharpened on the main hand and we use a shock glyph charged on the off hand charge means we can proc these quite consistently get the status effects which is reduced healing and it's take more damage so really really nice we then use an ice staff defending with a weapon damage cliff and then for the armor pieces we have heavy on the chest light on the waist reinforced chest in pen waist and everything else is medium armor all in pen you can change some of these to be well fitted as you need just kind of see well fitted as active first passive defense if you roll dodge a lot and you do it at the right time well fitted is better if you don't roll dodge well or you do it too much, then impen is just always going to give you defense. And I use triglyphs on all of these pieces. And then for the mythic, it's infused on the jewelry and his weapon damage on them as well. But that there, guys, is the build. I'd like to know what you think of it. Give it a go. Let me know down below. And as always, I want to say a massive thank you to all the people on Patreon. If you want to support myself there, they'll see it down below. As always, Thanks for watching, take care and bye.